Hey folks, Bud Talbot here at W0RMT. Thought I'd make a quick video of my jumbo spot, hot spot today, um, to sort of show you how it's set up and how it works. So this is the jumbo spot. It's on a Raspberry Pi Zero. It came in this small case from the vendor I bought it from on eBay. Um, you can see it's it's pretty small, and uh, right now I have it powered. Usually I power it from this anchor. Um, battery pack, this rechargeable anchor, 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack, um, and uh, it, it lasts forever. It doesn't draw much power, and uh, so this is my hotspot that I kind of carry with me all the time when I travel for work or or for family trips or going to work every day. I just keep this in my backpack. I usually have the battery pack with me anyway to charge the phone, but I also carry this hotspot with me, and uh, usually just tether it to the uh, wireless hotspot on my cell phone so that I can use it. So I thought I'd run through a few features of this hotspot, um, talk about how I got it set up, and then I'll show you the inside after I pause the video. So um, this is a, a simplex hotspot. It's got one time slot. It's operating on time slot 2 on DMR. I don't use it for D-Star. I use it for DMR. I guess I should have said that. Um, and uh, it works pretty well. When it came to me on the packaging, it said that the receive and transmit offsets were both minus 300. So I am running PyStar, and when I set it up in PyStar, I started at minus 300. And uh, I'll show you the PyStar configuration page. I did change the uh, receive offset a little bit to minimize the bit error rate, and so I can't remember exactly what it's at now. Um, but minus 300 was pretty close. Um, yeah, so this is the hotspot. It's just, you know, the it's got the, uh, I run it just with the OLED display. I don't ever plug it into an external display. And then I just uh, view the dashboard for Pi-Star on the computer, or if I'm mobile, I just pull it up on my phone every time. So one thing that's really handy to have on the phone is the Fing app, F-I-N-G, um, for Android, so I can find what the IP address of this guy is if it changes. Um, depending on what network it's connected to and then it's easy to connect to the dashboard so let me do a quick pause and I'll go over and show you the dashboard and uh, talk about setting it up okay so here's the dashboard right now that I've got on this um, hotspot apologies for the suboptimal video I'm not doing a, a um, screen capture on the computer I'm just using my phone still hopefully it'll come out okay so you can see that I've given this the host name Pi Z since it's built on a Pi Zero. I've got three hotspots running at any one time, so this is the nickname I've given this one. Um, and let me pop over to expert mode real quick and show you the uh, settings for receive and transmit offset and MMDVM host so that uh, you can see what I have it set up. So an expert MMDVM host down here under receive and transmit offset. I'm sorry, apologies. Earlier I said minus 300 plus 300. It actually said minus and plus 500 when this came to me, not 300. That was a different one. Um, so you can see I have, um, and not minus, another mistake. All right, so let's back up. When this came to me, it said that the receive and transmit offset were 500 hertz on each. So those were my starting points, 500. Now, I did change the receive offset quite a bit in 50 hertz increments to get the minimum bit error rate. And so what I'm running on this is 650 hertz for receive offset. And this gives me a good BER. I'm usually down about 0 0.4, 0 0.3 on the bit error rate. Um, so that's quite a bit of difference between what was specified and, um, and what I ended up at, the 500 versus the 650. I've heard of some people having trouble getting these things to key up when they get it set so this could be um, part of the issue is is not um, not getting your receive offset set um, but once you do it sounds really good I get good reports from this um, and it uh, keys up every time I don't have a problem with that um, it's a very reliable little hotspot let me pause again we'll go back over and look at the inside of the hotspot and get some traffic on there so you can see it Okay, here I took the cover off the uh, jumbo spot so you can see the inside. There's the cover. I will say the cover, um, when I got it, the punch out for the OLED screen had some rough edges on it, so I filed those down a bit. You might be able to see the spot in there where it's not black or it's silver. Um, it had been punched and it was just a little bit dirty. Same with the antenna port, so I did a little filing there. But 
Here's the jumbo spot itself and the OLED screen um, mounted on top. Underneath is the Pi Zero, you can see. Now, here comes some traffic. You can see it'll come up with a call. There's Ivan W1VAN on 31088, Colorado HD, where we talk about hotspots quite a bit. Um, and Jimmy and 7VDR. So the OLED's kind of nice, the OLED screen, because uh, if you have the volume down on your radio, which I often do if I'm at work and I have this on my desk, I can just see at a glance if there's some traffic. Um, you will see also on the jumbo spot there are some through-hole solder connections for OLED and also for a Nexian display, although this one happens to be mounted on the GPIO header instead of on those. I'm not sure why that design choice, but um, yeah, so that's what the inside looks like. Great little hotspot, easy to use, relatively cheap. Got it off eBay for 110 shipped, I think. Um, doesn't use much power, and uh, it's sort of a reliable little kind of go-to. So um, really happy that I have the jumbo spot to go with the other hotspots. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. Um, please feel free to jump in and join us on Grandmaster Talk Group 31088. That's Colorado HD hotspot discussion. Talk about this kind of stuff all the time. Or catch us on the NoCo Talk Group 3171, and uh, we'd be happy to, to discuss hotspots and all the projects that we're working on. So thanks again for joining. 73 W0 RMT.